Hello there. My name is Dr. J. Yil Cornelio. I am Associate Professor and the Director of the Development Studies Program at the Ateneo de Manila University. I will be speaking as a sociologist of religion, working on religious issues and social change. But I will be raising a lot of questions also, which I hope that you will spend time to think through and eventually you would share with me your answers to these questions. Here we go. So many things have been said about it, but I have a different opinion about the new normal. The new normal is about loss. Loss, kawalan. And it comes in all forms. Economic recession and unemployment are tangible experiences from which even upper and middle class Filipinos are no longer safe. Economic projections predict job losses and business closures. Without government intervention, small businesses do not even have a fighting chance. For an increasing number of Filipinos, the new normal is much, much worse. It's about the loss of loved ones for whom they did not even have a chance to grieve properly. The virus will end, but the dead will not come back to life. The reality of loss is why social media has become a space, a terrible space for agonizing. The emotion palpable across all platforms is grief. Yes, it's grief. Whether we admit it or not, anger, helplessness, and anxiety are emotions that intersect with one another these days. They are all connected to grief and the inability of people to cope with a reversible turn of events. Of course, the conflation is to be expected. The virus spreads and, a, and death is close. In the air is the uncertainty of the future. And to make matters worse, our national leaders, in lieu of comfort, offer us only threats. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, this, I believe, is a social context in which we ought to be asking, what does it mean to be church today? We can frame it in different ways. What does it mean to be part of a religious group? Or by the same token, we can also ask, how then do we live as people of faith from here on? What is the way forward for the church? What is the way forward for people like us who still believe? Maybe some of us would like to believe, so this is not only a question for Christians or the religious among us. Why? Why are these questions very important? Why am I even raising these questions? Two basic reasons, if, if I could offer you something. The first is that religion plays a crucial role in moments of crisis. This is certainly true for individuals. Where is God when it hurts? Where is God when there's so much pain? Spiritual and existential questions about the meaning of pain are often answered by religion, or at least religion attempts to answer these questions. But religion is also a social institution. It's not just an individual matter. It is a social institution. For all the talk that people have about religion being a private matter, and sociologists call it spirituality, for all the talk about it being a privatized concern, the reality is that religion and beliefs and practices are all shared. There is a deep sociological dimension to believing, to practicing, to doing religion. And so religion is a social institution that responds to crisis. Think about it. When the bubonic plague wreaked havoc in Europe in the Middle Ages, did people lose their religion? The answer is no. In fact, they turned to ritual. Some of you may not realize this, but proce processions gathering as many as 2,000 people, for example, were organized. But when it did not work, self-flagellations became fashionable too in France, in Hungary, in different parts of Europe. So religion tries to make sense of the crisis, the bubonic plague in that case, not only intellectually, not only theologically, but also ritually. Which is why the question that I am raising here, namely, what does it mean to be church in a moment like this? What does it mean to be church today? What does it mean to, to be church given the new normal, which I have described to you 
as about loss. So we go back to the question. The new normal is about loss. And what does it mean to be people of faith? You see, my observation is that religious groups are trying to simulate normalcy. How? It's very obvious. Mass is online. Evangelical services. They have their own online services, worship services. Uh, prayer meetings definitely are there, Bible studies, you name it. To move online is not surprising. More than a decade ago, and I have to admit this, I'm sorry, I did my graduate research and it was about the virtualization of spiritual experience. Quite a mouthful there. But really what I just wanted to say there in that project was that online communities can be as effective as physical ones in, facil in facilitating spiritual experience. Online communities are also powerful. I remember at the time I was doing research on, um, on uh, chat rooms, chat groups being organized among Christians all over the world, people who did not know each other, and yet somehow digital technology afforded them what sociologists would call collective effervescence or a feeling of being part of a group. Physical rituals are not the only ones that could bring people together. Digital technology does the same, and sociologists have been recording and analyzing this for quite some time already. So what churches are doing now is not necessarily new. Of course, it's the crisis that compelled them to go online. But you see, that's not so much the problem that I would like to give attention to. It's not. One thing I have noticed is that the battle for normalcy seems to be about the struggle to be happy, maging masaya. Bakit? Rejoice! Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And so I've listened to a few preachings and a few sermons, and it's almost predictable that you have pastors or ministers who would tell you that we just have to trust in God. God is a purpose for everything. And then they would go to Bible verses left and right or to show that God is a purpose for everything. Again, that's not necessarily a problem. But where is the problem there? And you have to bear with me. I'm a sociologist. And sociologists tend to be very pessimistic when it comes to these statements. Let's go back to the new normal. The new normal is about loss. People have died. Some of these deaths were unnecessary. People are losing their jobs. This unemployment is unnecessary. I leave it up to you to think about why they are unnecessary. But the point is that for many people, these losses are unnecessary. Where is grieving in this battle for normalcy? Where is anger? Where are the deep emotions that constitute humanity, that, that make us human beings who have to grapple with uncertainty? I am not sure the churches are able to address this issue head on. Don't get me wrong, okay? Do not get me wrong. Am I calling for massive repentance or self-flagellation as the Europeans did in the Middle Ages? No. We're not going to go back to 800 years ago or so. I think the big question that churches should ask today is about its role in embracing grief. It's not about simulating normalcy, nor is it about performing happiness, but it's about embracing grief. Of course, churches would want us to be happy, What's the point of doing religion if we're not going to think about salvation and redemption and forgiveness and happiness, heaven in a nutshell? But I think it's time that we asked ourselves as people of God at one level, or maybe as religious leaders, some of us might be watching, where's grief in the way we do religion today? Why am I asking this? From the point of view of sociology, my friends and brothers and sisters, if I could say that, grief is not only an interior disposition. Psychologists would say, of course, it is deeply internal, interior, emotional. But from the point of view of my discipline, sociologists, 
Sociology, movements around the world are built on powerful emotions such as grief and anger over the state of affairs. Let me say that again. Movements around the world are built on powerful emotions such as grief and anger over the state of affairs. You can think of Martin Luther King and the struggle for liberation among African Americans. You can think of pride as a movement built on anger and resentment about discrimination against the LGBT community. And we find it here even in the Philippines. Is religion part of it? You bet. Religion should be right in the middle of these movements built on grief, anger, resentment, and pain. Because grief is not only an emotional or psychological or interior matter, it is a social matter. It is our collective problem. How can religion respond to the problem of grief? Think about it. Well, at one level, religion can answer questions. It can offer theological viewpoints as to why all of this is happening. You can quote Romans 8.28, many pastors do that, which says a verse that says, all things work together for good to those who love God. And then say that just wait it out and then God is going to reveal to you his good plan in the midst of all this crisis. Or you can also quote verses or passages in the scripture that talk about how suffering is in fact a punishment. And again, pastors and ministers and priests have done that. Religion can answer questions. The power of religion in the midst of this crisis does not lie in being able to answer questions for the simple reason that we don't know the answers, do we? Which leads me to the other point that I would like to make. Maybe the power of religion is in bringing us together. Uh, so many speculations have been made about the Latin etymology of the word religion, but one of which means that it's about binding us together. Religion is to bind us together, which is why in French sociology of religion, um, at least in classical sociology, uh, religion is defined as a system of beliefs and practices that bring people together and into a moral community called the church. So there's a social function that religion performs today. And I think we don't have to go so far in thinking about the potential role of religion in our midst today. This is the way forward, brothers and sisters. How can religion process our emotions? How can religion, the social institution that brings us together, allow us to grieve together? Not just to be happy, which is important. Yes, coping mechanisms help us cope. But there's so much power, there's so much potential in the ability of religion to bring us together in order for us to grieve together. And then grief, when processed properly, can activate something really powerful. We can do something together. I told you a while ago that movements around the world are built on grief, anger, resentment, and all these deep emotions about the status quo. The new normal is about loss, and loss is not a private matter. In the midst of this crisis, loss is a shared matter. To grieve, therefore, must also be a shared matter. Religion must be at the heart of this grieving process. It is easy to say that the way forward is for spiritual experience, physical, in person, physical, spiritual experience done usually in a, in a physical space, must go online. But sorry to tell you, sorry to break the news, digital technology does not mean anything. Uh, this is why I'm very critical whenever pundits and commentators celebrate the arrival of digital technology and online learning and so forth and online services for that matter. They do not mean anything. Yes, digital technology is powerful, but it is only a platform. And then so allow me, to go back to my question, 
I will end there and allow you to think through these issues that I raise. More concretely, I want you to share with me your thoughts on this matter. What does it mean to be church, given that the new normal is about laws? Digital technology is there, sure. Maybe once things go back to normal, maybe we'll all be meeting each other again, physically, sure. But the fact remains that for a long time, for a long, long time, we will be thinking about the losses incurred during this quarantine, during this pandemic. People died, people lost jobs. Some business may have closed down. These are all manifestations of exactly the same experience of loss. Some are more painful than others, of course. So what does it mean to be church today, given that the new normal is about loss? Or do we simply have to wait it out? Please, share with me your thoughts and maybe we'll get an opportunity to think through them together and maybe grieve together. I look forward to receiving your responses. Thank you so much. You take care and God bless you all. Thank <laughs> you.